Good morning. I guess good evening to you when you watch this. Uh, so today we're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to show you a lot of things. Um, but to kick off this video, I need your help. So as y'all know, we have fenced off our entire property. Well, the cleared area that is. But we have no interior fencing. And I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want to do it because we're going to be tackling this project very soon. So the first on the agenda is this side of the house. So this is the side that's very big, very open. It's got our kitchen garden. Um, it's got a big back area and it's got the house. So what we're wanting to do is do this in two sections. So the petting zoo one's gonna be easy around the barn. Um, that's the easy one. Here's the hard part. Do I take it from the post down the driveway? Keep with me. In front of our house and over and fence in the house as well. Um, my only issue with that is really two things. One, I don't want to always have to mess with a gate all the time. You know, anytime you want to leave the house, you got to go out of a gate. So if I don't do that, do I section it off on this side and just shoot it straight down? And this is primarily going to be for the dogs. Uh, shoot this straight down this way behind the house and kind of do an L shape and go behind the house over there to give it all this room. That helps us in two ways. One, the dogs cannot get to this kitchen garden area uh, because Zena and Daisy love to dig. So I'll have to block that off. But I feel like it makes it feel a little choppy. And I don't want choppy or inconvenient. Um, I want it to be, well, it's functional. So here's the back side of the house. So if I went straight on this side and then cut, cut over behind the house down to the little creek and then shot straight across, that would give all of this area fenced in. Now the second piece is back there. Um, what we, we've always dreamed of having a petting zoo and it's time to start actually permanent fencing that because we would like to pasture it. It's a big enough area to where we can have the active area that they're on, let one side recover and then do a rotation. Uh, and that's easily done by just the openings of the bar. Um, we can only leave one open that gets into a certain area. But there we have this little like creek drain right there in that low spot. So I'm thinking that we take it on this side, that way they always have access to water, but that does put them pretty close to our house. Um, it's either put them on this side of the water or on that side, either one, but we'll see. But that one's easy, it's a big square. I can handle that and then probably a fence line right down the middle. But I really need y'all's opinion on the house part. Um, one of the biggest reasons that we're doing this is like throughout the day when the mail lady comes or when water checking, like right now we're calling in water because we have a gate. We have to keep our gate closed because our dogs will just pew, run right out. Um, and we want to start doing some interior fencing so the dogs won't always have access to the garden. Uh, not like in the afternoons and evenings, they would be let out of here and have be able to free roam everywhere. Uh, but basically once like guests are gone. And then lastly, just so you have the full picture, here's the side of the house. There's the driveway, here's the side. So would the fence like come straight up all the way over? Does it stop at the sidewalk? Does it come all the way down and shoot across? I don't know. I'm very puzzled on what we want to do and what would be the best function. So yeah, I know we've been working hard to get our website up. Well, we have been working with the most amazing person ever and it will be live Saturday. So that's really exciting. But I thought, because it's so awesome, Maybe you all would like a little sneak peek to kind of build some excitement from it. Here's a little quick glimpse of the home screen. That's all you get. You're gonna have to wait till Saturday. Be keeping an eye on it. We will announce it on, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we'll announce it on Facebook and the YouTube community and probably on Instagram as well. So you have like no reason not to be able to find it when it's officially live. Very exciting. But the, the domain name, somebody took Stivers Homestead. <laughs> so our domain is gonna be the Stivers Homestead. Um, so if you look at it right now, it's just gonna say coming soon for you all, but it'll be live Saturday and it's <laughs> super exciting. <laughs> Another 
record breaking orders. Man, y'all, that was amazing. Thank you all so much for buying the Calendula app. Um, as you're seeing this video, they're on their way to you yes. if you were able to get an order. And sorry if you did not get yeah. one. We had a lot, but next week we'll have more. So Yeah, and so they'll be out next week and then here. Uh, yeah, Memo was a huge help. She really helped us move fast. Um, and getting that done, it's crazy what just one extra person can do. Yeah. Um, but now it is time for chores, and I thought maybe y'all would probably like to see what's going on in the greenhouse. Yeah. So a few people have noticed our milking jug that we have. So the thing about when you have these stainless steel milking jugs, you want them to not um, have a, an edge where it's connected into and welded. You want it to be completely solid. So we actually got one of these off Lehman's website. And I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Absolutely insane price. Uh -huh. We found never right, do that again. Never again, because we didn't think we could get anywhere else. Well, well I, I checked Amazon first. They didn't have them. Yeah. Well, we checked Amazon again at about a quarter of the price. You can get the exact same gallon one. We was worried it wouldn't be the same sturdiness. Exact same. Exact same one. So we'll link it down below if you're curious. But it's a gallon. It's got a nice hanger. And then we use this, which is just a thermal thermos. Thermos. Yeah. Thermal thermos. But anyways, that's what we put our soapy water in because it's really easy to carry around with us instead of having like a bowl. Well, I sound country as all get out, but Zach has let me have the camera for a minute to catch clips of the chores. <laughs> And this is Memo, by the way, if y'all don't. I didn't uh, introduce myself. <laughs> Chores were loads of fun, having a memo up in there and the kids, really the whole family, and even Jed was right on the outside doing fire. Um, that was a lot of fun. We're getting so much milk, so much goat's milk soap, so much for us to put in our tummies because we all love goat's milk. And it's just, it's just a blessing. And it's so nice when it's a day like this, sunny, about 60 degrees, but here comes the rain. Greenhouse time. All right, so the last time you all saw in here, we had just started planting stuff in the ground. So now you can see a little update. We haven't been here forever. It's been goats, 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 but we have not forgot about the garden. We've got a lot of stuff going and I wanna show you how big some of the plants are getting. So starting with the green stalks, this is our mustard. It is getting nice and big and we got some kohlrabi down here. Then over here, we got some spinach going. Look at that little baby spinach leaves. We getting there. And then the raised bed. So we got cabbage, we got kale, we got some more kale. Um, this one, what is this one? That's collards. Look at this Joey Choi Chinese cabbage. It is the biggest growth that we've got going on. It's beautiful. And then down the line here, we've got a little bit more cauliflower, a little bit more broccoli, and everything's doing okay. A little stunted, but it's, it's doing okay. 
And then we got plenty more stars that are going on up here. Here's our onion bed, which we're gonna be play, planting really soon. And then the newest thing that y'all haven't seen are all of our flower starts. Look at that, y'all. That is zinnias, dahlias, cosmos, and then of course, Mexican sunflowers. They are doing amazing. So we actually got some pretty exciting news today. We have officially been accepted to start selling at the farmer's market here in our new local town. So that's really exciting. That means a lot of stuff. So we always, every year, sell some plant starts, um, but it's usually we throw it on the marketplace and then people come by and grab some. Well, we can actually sell at the, at the farmer's market now. Um, that aside, for all of you all watching, it is time to basically start for us here in 6B. So 6B is loose term. Um, our zip code, the last frost date, is usually the end of April, first week of May. So what we're gonna be starting is peppers for sure. Um, our tomatoes will probably wait one more week to get going, um, but since we already got our flowers going, the main thing will be peppers and then any kind of gourds. Uh, so loofah gourds, birdhouse gourds, stuff like that. Those are things that take really long time to mature. So it's good to get an early start. And peppers are just slow in general to start. Um, they're slow to germinate, they're slow to grow. So it's always good to get a good kickstart on your peppers. So we'll be doing that in the next few days. Probably wait a week, then we'll get into the tomatoes, and then we'll get into everything else. Because there's a lot of stuff we gotta get planted. We've also received our seed potatoes from Haas Tools. So we've gotta get a bed prepped. Unfortunately, we got like five inches of rain coming over the weekend. We were finally starting to dry out from all the craziness that we had. Um, so we are fingers crossing that the, this five inches will go and then we'll get some sun for a couple weeks so we can actually get some beds prepared. Because I am dying to get that tiller attachment on my tractor out and start using it. I, I bought it and haven't even been able to use it because it's been so wet. Um, but all that's coming up in like the next couple weeks. So it's like, Goats are still there, still gonna be milking, but now it's time to start shifting focus to garden. Probably most importantly in this greenhouse is the comfrey is coming back. So that means as much as that you all love the calendula and the goat smoke soap, our top seller is Jen's comfrey sad. And we can't thank y'all enough for supporting, supporting her with that. Um, but that'll be coming in the next couple of months. We've had a lot of people asking, all of our stuff is coming from our garden. So it's seasonal when it's ready, we're able to get it to you. Um, so that'll be coming in probably two months if I had to guess, maybe less than that, depending on how well it does in this greenhouse. That made me think of one other thing too that I wanted to talk to y'all about. So um, y'all know one of my dreams is at some point, however far down the future it's gonna be, is to do this full time. Now I'm not just talking about YouTube, I'm talking about farming, making enough from the farm to be able to live and survive and not have to have another job. Um, there's been a few YouTubers that have been doing that and been able to quit their jobs and be able to do this full time. Y'all, all I ask is just support what you can. Um, I've seen a lot of people kind of throw some shade or hate because people are doing Patreon or memberships or this and that. We have memberships, um, but people's like, I can barely support myself. I can't support another person. That's not what these people are asking from you. They're not asking anything from you, to be honest. It's if you watch TV, if you watch a concert and you see a VIP ticket or you're seeing, going to see a movie, that's you supporting someone providing you entertainment. So just take it with a kind heart. Understand that they don't expect anything out of you. Just watching the videos is all they ask. But if you're able to support, that's fine. You're not missing out on anything. You're just getting a little bit extra. This is not me promoting my membership. It's just honestly saying, if you're coming across channels that do that, don't think negatively of them. Support one another. It's extremely important. And if supporting is literally you just putting it on their YouTube channel, that's enough. So saying that, thank you to everyone and all of you from the Stop Trap that helps support us. And dinner is brought to you a lot by our previous garden, canned can taters and green beans. Butcher box pork chops. Butcher box pork chops.